Hey guys, games for life here and in today's video we're gonna take a look at 6 different rover types that you need to try in Estronier. We'll go over each one of these and how you can use them in today's video. But first I want to tell you about the vehicle playlist. This video is gonna be in that playlist, you should be able to see it on screen right now. So make sure to save it and watch it after finishing this video. It's really cool, it's got a ton of stuff about vehicles in Estronier and yeah, I suggest you watch that. So the first rover we're gonna take a look at is the digging rover. This rover is equipped with 2 drills, soil canisters and an RTG for power because both of these drills consume quite a bit of power but if you want to make this design cheaper on resources you can replace the RTG with basically anything else like a solar panel, a wind turbine, anything goes, even generators. So here's what I use the digging rover for. This is very good for well um, digging so you can gather tons of soil with it and you probably don't even need two drills for it. But I just wanted to go overboard for this video. So yeah, this is especially good in caves, where you can dig your way around without getting stuck. And if you've got a soil centrifuge in order to get your resources and you need a ton of soil, this is the way to go. You'll gather it in no time and you can have all the resources you might possibly need. Okay, we'll park it over here and let's move on to the fast rover or the rocket rover as I like to call it. Basically all you need for this design is two hydrazine thrusters in the back or you can even just use one of those. And I've also added a hydrazine canister so we have tons of fuel on the go. We've got a QTRTG for power and some lighting so let me show you what this can do. With just the press of a button you can turn on your rockets and you'll go extremely fast. And yes you can even go to space using this but we won't do that right now. So let's stay on Glacio. But this is really good if you need to get somewhere fast or if you just want to do trick shots in the air like this. And we've also used this rover in some of our racing videos that we did on Vesania. It's a really cool rover, very fast and it's the only one that can actually fly. So yeah, a pretty unique design and it's a ton of fun. Let's fly it over to the other rovers so we can move on to the next. And we kind of turned it into a helicopter now. There we go. We'll park it precariously on that edge. Our third design is the road building rover. And as you can see, this is equipped with a drill, a paver and a ton of soil. Basically, if you want to build a road, all you need is just the paver. But I've added a drill as well so that you can go into the caves. Or you can make your road go downwards when you want it to. And all you need to perform this is some soil. So make sure you gather your soil beforehand so that you can build all the roads you want. It's important to note that the paver takes one U per second and the drill takes one as well, plus the one from the rover. So you'll need at least three U's per seconds of power while using this. That's why I've added the RTG here. But again, you can use whatever else you'd like. Generators, wind power, solar power, whatever. For example, you can have some wind turbines and the battery if you're on Glacio or maybe you're on Kelidor and you can use some solar power over there. So you don't have to follow these designs exactly, you can make them your own by adding and removing different stuff. Okay, here's the next one and one of my favorites. This is the power provider rover and this has a ton of power items on it. For starters, it has an RTG and then we've got solar power, wind power and batteries. On this side is all the small ones and here we've got the medium ones and all of these should be able to provide a ton of power wherever you go and if you want it to be more capable on hard terrain you can also add a drill and a paver to the front of it this comes in especially handy when you try to unlock a gate for example or when you try to pop one of those things that holds a research item in the middle that require some power for at least a couple seconds to open and we're gonna try to find one of those now to show you you just pull up to it I guess we'll have to remove the lights first. There we go. And then you connect it and it should pop it right off, providing a ton of power. And there's your research item. Okay, so you might think this is a little bit overkill for just one of these things. But as I said before, where this really comes in handy is when you try to open a gate. So you can do the same thing to a gate, just like that. Now, obviously in order to unlock this one, you'll need three different power sources. So you can bring a small platform with you and some extenders and with just one rover you can unlock a whole gate. But if you're on Silva, the starting planet, most of the gates only have one of these. 
so you should be able to unlock them without needing additional resources. Additionally, the Power Provider Rover can help you on the go when you need to establish a little outpost on your journeys, which is not like an entire base, just a couple platforms you can craft something on the go, and maybe you don't have the time to build all the power items and everything like that, so you just bring on your Power Rover, and just like that you can have an outpost anywhere you want by just connecting it to your Rover. Oh, and of course, as a bonus, your Rover will never run out of power, obviously. All right, now let's head back because the last two designs that I'm about to show you are the weirder ones but I really like them and at least one of them is even functional you'll see what I mean in a second now let's take a look at the rover train basically these are just four rovers linked together this is the maximum length for your rover train so as much as I want to I just can't link 10 of these or even more but four is enough. So in the front we've got a drill and a paver, so we can make our traversal easier. We've got an RTG for power, we've got some elementary resources here like compound, astronium, glass or carbon. Then we've got a shredder, if we encounter anything shreddable on the go, so that by the end of our journey we can have a lot of scrap. The next one has a smelter, and this is basically where you put everything you mine and it will smelt them. For example, here we've smelted a ton of hematite into iron. And the last one is your soil centrifuge for when you need something on the go. Like you need a specific resource and you don't feel like searching for it, you can just use this. And you'll naturally gather some soil by using your drill while you're driving. Now the only downside of this thing is maneuverability is pretty bad especially in turns, so it's gonna be pretty hard to turn all four of these rovers together. But as long as you go pretty much in a straight line, you should be good. And of course, it can handle turns, you just need to be careful about how you do them. And yeah, this is basically the perfect rover for a road trip, if you want to just go around the planet without ever needing to stop or without ever needing to have a little base. You've basically got a base right on top of your rover, so you can keep on going and you'll have everything you need because of the smelter, the soil centrifuge, and all of that. You can just craft a printer on the go, build the stuff you need and keep on going and discovering new exciting things on Astroneer's planet. And I've seen some people who said this was actually slower than just one rover, and I've tested it, it's actually not. It has the exact same top speed as a normal rover would, so you've got no problem in that department. As I said, the only pet peeve I have with this is its maneuverability, but you kind of get used to it over time. All right, now it's time for the last design we're gonna look at today, and that's the weird rover, and I think the name says it all. This is basically everything you don't need on a rover, but we've put it on a rover. I don't even know where to start, we've got this huge thing in the front that will make traversal really difficult with a ton of weird stuff, like some RTGs, we've got an exo-chip, a portable smelting furnace, that could actually come in handy, now that I think of it. We've got a generator, a cosmic bubble, because why not, even some glow sticks and a curious item, but we won't go over all of those. Now, some things to blow up, we've got dynamite, methane, hydrogen, also an automation item from the Xmas event, and this huge thing in the back, which is the Cauldron Gia plant. If you've never seen this, that's because it's a limited time event. You can only get it from the Halloween event, so make sure to keep some of these around for when you need to build a weird rover. Of course, the seat is in the back so you can't really see well what you're doing and it makes driving it a little bit weirder but that's the charm of it so this is the only design that doesn't really have anything special except all of it so it's just really weird but yeah next time you have some friends over on your multiplayer server just give them this rover and don't say anything that should be pretty fun so we've finished off with the most useless one but let me know what you think about all the others which can actually be useful in the game. And if you've got any other rover designs that you think I should take a look at, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget about the vehicles playlist, you should definitely save that now, and watch all of the cool videos in there. That's gonna be all for today, I've been Games for Life, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, Astroneers!